The Wellness Show, episode number 365. Welcome to The Wellness Show, a podcast on health and wealth. I'm your host, Tyson Bannigan, the founder of the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy. Join me as we get the latest insight, tips, and strategies from wellness providers, coaches, and successful heart-centered entrepreneurs, and much, much more. Welcome to the Wellness Show on Health, Wealth, and Enlightenment. This is your host, Tyson Bannigan, and we're with you for the next hour. You can phone in toll-free, 1-866-369-7464, and get your questions answered about dowsing and energy healing, what's up on planet Earth, or what's up in your life. And a uh, very nice uh, day here today, We're having a little bit of rain, spring rain. It's the long weekend here in British Columbia and Canada. It's Victoria Day, okay? Thank you, Queen Victoria, for giving us a day off, right? Time to garden. And of course, it's the first weekend out for everybody in Canada. And of course, every weekend at this time, it seems to rain. So you get to camp in the rain. But anyway, it's the beginning of summer. It's the beginning of of the way that we love to live in the Northern Hemisphere, at last we can get out. Oh, wait a minute, there's a lockdown with COVID-19. Anyway, they're letting us come out and play more and more. Um, I don't know, there's this big war going on about whether you're the masked bandito or not. So what is it, Laura, if you wear your mask, you must be a Republican. If you don't wear your mask, you must be a Democrat. I don't know, it's getting all political in the United States. I don't know. It's getting scary. It's getting political. I think it's yeah. Are you guys getting out getting your mind? It's All those that don't, don't wear masks or your baddies or who's the goodies? Uh, the bass are the masks. The good guys are the bad guys. Right. I haven't figured it out. Yeah. But it's become politicized, right? <laughs> That's what I've heard. You haven't heard that? I live it every you single know. day. Yeah. And you know what? I just, I just am, have. Through this show, through talking and, and doing meditations, I I raise my hands, I submit, I give up. Oh, well, we need to vaccinate you. That'll straighten you up. <laughs> no, 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 no. Just bend it's over and we'll give you the vaccination. If yeah, somebody needs the vaccination to feel, to feel safe, then that's good for them. Well, actually, I think COVID-19 is pretty good. I like this whole thing about, you know, stay at home. I think it gets safer to stay at home. It's way too crazy out there in the world right now. I don't want to go out there, even if you're going to no. let me out go out and play. I think people, at first were like, people at first were like, no, I don't want to be home. Now they're all like, I don't want to go back to work. This is nice, man. Two, two months. It's getting crazy they out there. Me more money than I make when I, when I actually work that I had someone tell me that this weekend. And they don't want to go back to work. And they don't want to go back to their offices. They want their offices at home now. Yeah, well, People are trying to figure it out. Yeah, what? I'm getting no charity from my government. I'm, you know, still oh. doing what I'm doing. So I don't get any handouts like some people I know. So I'll take whatever they give me, man. You want to give me free money? All right. Bring it on. All right. So who has some questions out there? Are there any brilliant questions out there in, in Facebook land. We try no. to go live on Facebook and at the same time on YouTube. And I think that's sort of, you can't be in two places at once, I guess. It, so, blew, it, it blew our energy grid. <laughs> it blew our energy grid, right. Uh, speaking of which, being in two places at time and duality and um, male and female energy, let's talk about that today. Male, female energy, duality, being at two places at one time. Are you talking about sex again? <laughs> I don't know. Did I, say, I said Tyson. <laughs> the divine marriage yeah. between male and female. Well, guess what? It starts inside of yourself. Mm -hmm. Coming to terms with your divine feminine, your divine masculine, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. For us men, uh, for me, you know, it was very difficult. Like, what does this mean to be a man uh, being an empath? I was never very good at being a, uh, you know, having a baseball cap on and being, kicking tires on trucks. I just couldn't relate to that. So, yeah, I think uh, the stereotype, typical male and female can be very scary for lots of people. At least it was for me in growing up. 
Mm -hmm. So, yeah. So what does it mean to be male? What does it mean to be female in this day and age? Not mm -hmm. an easy thing, especially with women's liberation and um, women coming into their power. One of the things that happens when there's a rising ascension of energy in one group is that it tends to uh, get well, it just gets really hard for the other side. So we're looking for balance between the two. The sacred divine marriage is the marriage within you between the divine masculine and the divine feminine. Until we do that inside of ourselves, there's not much help of doing it in our relationships or doing it in our, in our society and our culture, but certainly that's mm -hmm. the way to go. In uh, our politics, we we're talking about, you know, the mass bandito, who, who is the mass bandito? If you're wearing a mask, are you pro-liberal uh, or pro-conservative, or are you? And I mean, I can't get this straight. You know, are you Democrat or are you anti-Trump? I, you know, I guess if you don't wear a mask, you're pro-Trump. That's it, because Trump doesn't wear a mask. So they're right, right. That That's what I've got. That if you're not wearing a mask, you must be Republican, and if you're wearing a mask, you must be Democrat. So we're just going mm -hmm. to shoot you. I don't know. It just seems like really, really crazy. I, it I, is. It is. The duality is getting really, it's, right. it's really starting to vibrate on both sides. Yeah, and, uh, and uh, the solution for America. I mean, look, if I wanted to control America, which, by the way, is one of the agendas of those in the Illuminati, right. I would keep it up. I would get the Democrats just to beat on the Republicans and vice versa, too busy like fighting each other that we just split America right down the middle and whoa, we just pick up the pieces, right? As America goes to hell in a handbasket and the stock market crashes, we just run in and buy everything up at the lowest rates and, you know, come on, well, people. Everyone the more you fight, the more you lose America. Texas, can go to Texas. I'll, everyone who wants to be either Democrat or Republican, I don't care which, can go to Texas and then, then the opposite side the rest of America, right? <laughs> and then we can have our our two our two different countries. No, nah, ain't gonna work that way. It's crazy, but I I agree that uh, that that bringing the two together and and creating harmony is the answer. Yeah, and, that's the future of America. Otherwise, America's gone. Mm hmm. I agree. I agree. And that, you know, is that, would that be a bad thing? I don't know. Would it be a good thing? I don't know. I think it's just kind of uh, something to think about. Yeah. Well, we're open. The line's open. Let's hear your thoughts about, you know, are you a mask bandito or not? Are you going out in public with a mask or not with a mask? Oh, okay. Yeah. Side of the fence are you on? I is there no fence to be on the side of? I went to Whole Foods this weekend and I pulled, I pulled in, <laughs> I walked in and, and they said, um, would you like a mask? And I said, no, thank you. And I went in and there was nobody else didn't have, a, I was the only one with no mask and people were literally running for me. And I felt, I was kind of laughing because I'm like, I just don't understand because they're basically, my viewpoint is that they're basically um, lowering their immunity, which is then putting me at risk. But I don't have fear, and I and I figure if I get that there's, I if I get the COVID nineteen, which I believe I've already had, I know that I'm strong enough to get through it, so I'm not afraid of it. But what does that mean but, for those um, that are not wearing a mask, like you, and those that are? Mm -hmm. There's going to be a lot of judgment. There was a really interesting video out, which was done you know, like one of these terror movies where, you know, guys running past his friend and his friend says, how are you doing? Oh, I'm doing fine. They have this conversation and then they hug and then there's all these people clicking and, you know, reporting to the helicopter. And then there's this manhunt for the two guys because right. they hugged each other. You know, that's the craziest we can get to if, you know, people are looking at you weird because you're not wearing a mask in the store. How, mm -hmm. how far are we far away from social shaming, right? I didn't feel any, I didn't feel that. I felt like people were farther away from, they wanted more social distancing for me than the normal, but I didn't feel shamed at all. And I feel very, like I feel other people's emotions very strongly. Yeah. And I didn't, I didn't feel, 
like they were shaming me or they were saying that I was wrong. Good. So I was just kind of laughing because I, I saw this guy on the side of the road and he had it on and he was outside and I said, you're outside. What are you doing? And he kept, lo he kept looking at my car and I'm like, yeah, I'm the one who yelled at you, man. <laughs> you're outside. You don't need a mask. Take it off. We don't want you to like um, hyperventilate because that's what happened to some people in a car. They got into a car accident because they had their masks on and they couldn't they couldn't get enough oxygen. And I'm like, oh, come on, people, let's think a little bit more. And I don't know. I mean, if you want to wear a mask and it makes you feel safe, I, go for it. I just don't I don't want to live in that. I just don't want to live like that. What about you? Do you wear a mask? What mask? <laughs> my friend my friend sent me a, a a photo from brazil and the the um bus driver had his his mask on and he had a picture of a woman sitting in the bus and she had a mask on it was it was a <laughs> no it was you know like from carnival yeah. <laughs> just over her eyes <laughs> she was very she was wearing a mask that's the one that i want to wear i want to go out you want to be in disguise feathers you know some really pretty ones <laughs> then they don't know who i am that's right they don't know who you are yeah <laughs> well i'm trying to figure out whether my, the gym i have to wear a mask in the gym or not because i want mm -hmm. love to go back i mean I, i've set up my own gym here so if I have to go to the gym and wear a mask, I'm not going to do it because I'm going to be breathing in my own exhaust, you know, my own CO2. So I'm just going to be, you know, rather than getting all of what no longer serves me out, I'm going to regurgitate that by breathing in, which is like right. crazy making, especially yeah. if I'm working out. So I'm not going to do that to myself. So if there's masks in the gym and everybody's, you know, already is so crazy in the gym where we wipe down absolutely everything. I mean, I don't know. I know. Uh, you know, and why are you so afraid of my sweat? <laughs> well, uh, do you really want me to go into that? <laughs> Yesterday we talked about compost brains. I yeah. don't know. <laughs> I was just gonna say that last week he called my brain compost, and now <laughs> this year he doesn't. Or today he doesn't want to talk about my breath. Oh my <laughs> lord! <laughs> I have sweaty hands, right? <laughs> and now you want to talk about male female? I you know balance. I don't know. Anyway. Yeah, so, you know, what do you guys think about masks and all of us and keeping healthy and whatever? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's one of the reasons I wanted to do the clearing the virus and, and the flu shots is that, you know, some of us had to take shots, whether we wanted to take them or not. Why don't we want to learn how to clear all that, right, out of our system? Or maybe everybody does know how to do that. Um, because I think it's going to get crazier and crazier. If everybody's running around, looking for a vaccine. And by the way, the latest evidence, if I'm understanding right, this may be conspiracy theory, please somebody look it up and let me know whether I'm right or wrong. But I understand in the United States that the lawsuit by Kennedy, um, that there was, they run the law, the court case, saying that they asked for evidence, any evidence that vaccine works. And there's no evidence, no scientific evidence that vaccine works. Okay. Right. So if that's true, then why are we running well, around looking I, for a vaccine for COVID-19 if no vaccines actually do what they're supposed to be doing? In fact, there seems to be mm -hmm. lots of evidence that they do harm. So this is a big question in my mind. Why are we so up, you know, so fixated on a vaccine worldwide? I mean, this is just not America, Canada, the same thing, right? Why are we so busy? And the, th the most important thing is why are we as citizens globally so willing to give away our human rights because we think the government is going to protect us from COVID-19? <laughs> I mean, okay. okay, let me just stop. Because, you know, okay, so we did have like some like polio and stuff like that. And they say that, uh, that they deleted those off. So they're like, and there is some truth in that, right? At least that's what we're told. We're not told about how much polio or different kind of viruses are prevalent in a, anywhere because we don't talk about it. So we really don't know. Um, 
but when I was a little girl in kindergarten, they gave me three shots. They gave or one shot with three, three different um, vaccines in them, or whatever anti-vaccine, right? Or what? Do you, how do you say it? I don't know. I just remember polio that they get this needle and they scratch you on the arm and they have this little mark for the rest of your life. Right. Or right. They, the polio scratch, right? And my, my first wife did have um, a polio and she, you know, did re uh, did affect her spine because mm -hmm. of whatever. But, you know, a lot of, anyway, there's a, well, some evidence that the actual vaccine was part of the problem as well. Anyway, it seems to me that if the human race, if God divine, you know, created humans and to live on this planet, then they also created an amazing immune system, right? Mm -hmm. And I would think that when we think, you know, every time that humans think we're smarter than nature or God, we get ourselves into real predicament. So well, that was my point is, is that they have all these vaccinations and we've, and we have um, antibiotics, but now we have superbugs. And so why do these viruses keep getting worse? And how come when I was a kid, a cold would last one to three days and now it's lasting lasting one to three weeks. I mean, it's like, I don't think that people are actually viewing, seeing it the way that I see it or that the way that you see it, Tyson. And that they, that there's sometimes getting sick is, or actually getting sick and having a fever actually, um, like heats out all the toxins in your body. There's a good reason for getting sick. So why are people so afraid of getting sick? And like fevers, fevers can be very good. They can also be very dangerous. Right. So it's, it's good that we have things that can help with the dangerous part. But there's also there's also points of it being that fevers are actually very good too. And yeah, they burn out. I mean, think about it. you know you and you know the deep clearing protocol is you clear what you don't want and you stall what you do on the the mm -hmm. heat of the of the virus or is to clean your body of, of i don't know about you but every time i've ever had anything like that you know and had a fever afterwards i just feel like i'm walking on air it just feels mm -hmm. like it just feels like i just cleaned my body out with like a furnace blast of energy in fact when i have something like that which is rare i want to get even hotter right i just want to burn right through everything yeah. And as Debbie yeah. said here, the big thing really is that, that you know, we have big pharma behind this is a big pharma pharmaceutical agenda. And from what I understand that they that the pharmaceutical uh, business is not making as much money as it used to. So they have to come up with creating a need for vaccines, right? Uh, and this is a way to manufacture a need for something that we don't need. Anyway, that's my opinion. And mm -hmm. I may be totally wrong. Well, for me, I haven't been on any pharmaceuticals for 20 years. I haven't even been to a Western doctor in 20 years. So when I take um, remedies for whatever's going on inside of me, my practitioner, Shay, says that my body reacts like that. And within like two or three days, I don't have to take the remedy anymore because my body knows what to do. And if I were to take like, I don't know, a pharmaceutical, the last time I did, my guides told me not to, and I ended up projectile vomiting it out. And they said, don't ever take that poison again. And I haven't gone back. Yeah. So that's my, that's my experience. I don't do big pharma. <laughs> All right. So we're going to shift up to Eduardo wants to know about okay. uh, how to wake up in our power. I mean, first thing in the morning when we open our eyes beside the deep clearing protocol, how do we shake off a bad dream? or a bad day. Where are you um, some of my clients get rattled and have trouble getting grounded. Well, for me, I use a grounding mat. I'm uh, fortunate that I have a PMF mat, which uh, puts me in harmony with the natural cycles of the earth. So I literally out of, roll out of bed. I pee and I'm half asleep. I roll onto my PMF mat and I put on the grounding. I ground myself and I just, I have 30 to 40 minutes of just there. And during that time, I'm running divine mother energies. I'm clearing myself. Uh, that's how I have my day so that I'm revitalized. I'm grounded to mother earth. I've let go of everything that no longer serves me coming out of one dimension into another. 
So by the time I get off that mat and have my shower, I'm wide awake for the day. So that's how I do it. So I highly recommend a PMF mat or a one like that, or a grounding mat, anything to get you grounded to Mother Earth, right? That to me is the most important thing. So that's what I do. I also like the stress. If I need to de-stress, if I can remember, I just get up from, you know, I teach, you know, step away from the desk, put your hands up in the air, step back, and then, uh, you know, go to the garden is my latest thing, right? I just like, when my brain gets fried, I just push away from the desk and go dig in the garden for mm -hmm. 20 minutes to an hour. Come that takes there. a lot of, that takes a lot of, um, um, energy and brave bravery on your part because it, the computer and all of this technology can be extremely addicting. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I've got a million things to do. I mean, I'm writing books and I've got three books underway. I mean, I, if I think about what I got to do, I'll just get so overloaded and so stressed out that I can't go there, right? I have to be focused on what I'm doing. But even that, I have to take breaks. So for me, this is new for me. Uh, I just forcing myself to go in the garden. Now I want to go to the garden, right? I just want to go and get out of the office. And then when I come back, I have a clear mind and I can do some more work, right? I learned that a long time ago that I, I'm not a good healer at all if I, don't, if I don't take time for myself away from all of this. I go into the woods, I don't take anything with me except me and my dog and my clear mind and I will disconnect from everyone and everything and, and meditate during the day. I need, I need that, that middle ground is what I call my alignment. And it's getting easier and easier and easier to be in that alignment. Um, but the distractions from television and, and technology and phones and, um, even even um, Alexa, I unplugged Alexa in this house. And I just don't, it's too easy. It's too easy to get distracted with, with that and not do and connect with God, which is my number one priority. So Matt says, there's no fence, there's no mass. Oz says, no mass for me neither, either unless I'm sick or coughing. Eliza says, I think more people die from wearing a mask and suffocation than Corona. Lots of love. Um, Debbie says, totally asinine. I hope she's not talking about us. I hope she's talking about us. <laughs> <laughs> <The mask. laughs> Debbie's too sweet. <laughs> and uh, Oz says, feminine mask balance is a good topic. Well, we didn't last on that for very long. But then and Debbie talked about big pharma making the money. That's the agenda. Do you have advice for women who were born in countries that value having a son more and felt the pressure all their lives and could not embrace their feminine side fully? Yeah, clear that crap. Yeah, absolutely. Just do a clearing on your matriarchal, patriarchal lineages. Um, and it's not just in your, just in those type of countries. Like my mom always had that problem uh, and uh, never was settled as being uh, my mom because she always thought that she needed to be out there and she were she was trained or she was very very good uh, in fashion design and so when I was when she was pregnant with me she was very resentful about well she's excited on one hand about having a son on the other hand she was uh, very depressed because she couldn't work anymore and the reason why she had all that um, tension was because in her family, it was clear from her father that he was disappointed in having a daughter, that he would rather have a son. And the, her brother, who was Robert, who died of an early age uh, because he worked himself to death, bilingual lawyer, was, you know, the apple of the eye in the family, right? Because he was mm -hmm. the male. So I, I'm, the reason I'm telling you this story is that it's not just... It's in many, many, many cultures, including our own culture. It's just not, you know, in the Eastern cultures or, or they, you know, it's everywhere, right? That somehow mm -hmm. being male is more, is a better deal. Now, I you know, I, in some ways in developing countries, having a male makes sense because they can work harder in the fields, right? Uh, and, uh, you know, I've worked in the international development uh, world for many 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 years and have been many many very many many 
developing countries. And the whole story about, you know, people have children because of this and that and everything. People have children because they need to support themselves. They need to labor. Let me tell you, when they don't have to labor and as harder in the fields, right? They don't have as many children. There's no need to have those children. They think, oh, well, you know, they just have all these kids. Now they have these kids for a reason, right? Come on. If they had full bellies and they were happy, they would have 2.5 kids, right? The problem with the 2.5 kids is in North America and all through Europe, it's not sustainable. Literally, uh, as a nation, we will be Islamic in a very short time. Why? Because we ha don't have enough uh, birth rate high enough to sustain the our country, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. ethnically. So <laughs> it's really, really interesting from a Muslim point of view, you know, they don't have to, there's no religious war or anything. You just repopulate the whole place, right? So it's interesting, that whole thing about, you know, family, family units, what does a family mean? Do we have just, just a small family of 2.5 because both of us have to go and work, right? Mm -hmm. uh, to support our family. Like, well, to live the way we do now, yeah. Yeah, so, you know, if, again, if I was, you know, an alien species, but by the way, I have to keep saying this, which I'm not, well, maybe <laughs> I am, uh, and I wanted to really screw up this planet, I would convince everybody to, to only have 2.5 children, right? Mm -hmm. I would say, well, I would want to break up the family unit, and I want to put everybody to work, right? I want to put them to work. Uh, and if they have more than two kids, then uh, they're not going to go to work. And how can I tax them? Like if women aren't working, I can't tax them. I can't. So as 50% of the population, I can't make money off of. So I need to screw up the family unit, put everybody to work, and then I can tax the bejesus out of them, right? Mm -hmm. so, so now twice as much work is being done. And I'm getting the return on that. And I'm ruining the family unit. Perfect. Perfect. So let's destroy the family unit as a key way of destroying America. Do you see where I'm coming from? Mm -hmm. Pretty straightforward, right? But no, we don't figure these things out, right? We don't think about what it is that we're doing. We just somehow think that what's being presented to us is the way to go, that, you know, we're sort of like blindly leading, going forth. Okay, so yeah. do you have advice for women who, yeah, I would clear all that crap. I would clear all that crap. I would be so, if I was a woman, I, I would be running around with a superwoman suit on, emotionally, psychologically, and spiritually. Yeah, I, I would be so kick-ass strong. You wouldn't want to mess with me, right? I'm just I, saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> that's what I'd be doing. I would be, I, in fact, that's what I talk to the women. I, I, have you gone and got There's your superwoman? Have you got your superwoman suit yet? Because if you don't feel like superwoman, you're not there yet, right? Right. But there is a balance with masculine and, and feminine energy in everybody. In you, in, you have a feminine energy and a masculine energy. I have a feminine and masculine. I always had a masculine energy that overpowered my feminine energy. And now it's, it's much more in balance. And it's much more harmonic. And my whole body and my whole mind feel better because of that. So my advice for women that um, feel uh, pushed down is to get more of that male energy because that's where the strength is. But remember that you're that <clears throat> strength as in uh, yeah I think physical, that, that could be a mis physical kind of a misnomer though. Uh, I think one of the things that with women's liberation Sorry to interrupt. The imbalance that you're talking about is absolutely right. We need to balance the, the male and the female energy. But one of the things that happens in balancing the female is they think, well, we have to follow the masculine model. That's not what we're talking about. No. You don't need to become masculine in all of the negative ways in which masculine, you know, masculinity shows up. The world. We're talking about just being strong in who you are. So I'd rather you be feminine, feminine with, uh, you know, your superwoman suit on than trying to play the mask and role of being tough in that sense. If we're if we're physical, mental, and spiritual beings, and and 
if you take the the physical and I mean the I'm sorry the masculine and the feminine in the physical and in the spiritual and in the and in the mental and you balance all of those out that's what I'm talking about I'm not saying go out and like become brute strength become brutes like that that male energy of standing up for yourself and having boundaries and and not allowing people to walk all over you and that's all a part of of what it is that Tyson and I teach is to come into balance with all of those different energies. And it's not so clear cut as um, just do this and then everything will go into balance. It's, it's a tightrope walk and one that you constantly have to be aware of when it's out of balance. And if, and if you allow men, which I did for a long time, um, I allowed them to treat me a certain way that that didn't that wasn't honoring myself once i figured that out then i was able to balance it out but i didn't i didn't have to go like way above it either which is what i think feminism does is it goes way above that masculine energy and it over it overrides the the male and pushes pushes their masculinity down there's beauty in masculine energy and that strength and there's beauty in the feminine, the feminine, um, how do you say it? Like nurturing, caring, all of that is very powerful as well. And when it's all in balance, it's freaking harmonious and it's awesome. And that's what, it's not about going over one or the other. And that's why I'm not a feminist. I don't believe in feminism because it's not in balance. No, you're in trouble. No, you're in I don't bring it. Yeah, just yeah, I go know. with women. You're I, I on the fence. Now we're not only in Republican <laughs> Democrats are pissed off, and now all the feminists are pissed off. Dude, way to go. Way to go. This way. <laughs> bring you're them on off. because I've dealt with I've dealt with your age women, especially in their 60s and 70s. That's when feminism was really strong. And the men, the mass, the masculinity of the men, it's like been pushed down and they don't know where to go or what to do and it's very um to me it's very unattractive in the men and it's very unattractive to see the women like telling the men like what to eat and like what they can and cannot do and the men are just like you notice the ads on tv a lot of them are uh, the ads are putting men down like the men are seen as somehow somewhat stupid and the women are uh you know let you that's see it over imbalance. and over and over. Hmm? Right, that's that imbalance. Yeah, and, and, and they, they, you know, it, they're making fun mm -hmm. out of the male. I've noticed that over and over again. So it's interesting. Yeah. The men are sort of you can portrayed in that lots of ads as the not, the not the smartest one of, not the smartest whatever in the group. When he comes, I don't. Know what I don't. I don't agree with that. I think that there's when you come in as a as the masculine and feminine and feminine energy that the two together make decisions and that it's not you don't put one or the other down because either one is is pulling out power from the other one like we talked last week about vampiring you know vamping on people and that's not that's not balance we're talking about harmony and balance within the masculine and feminine and it's a tightrope walk no one said that it was easy no one said that it was that it that it wasn't obtainable either and that uh, once for me if you if for me the real balance is to look at mary magdalene and christ look at their relationship and do mm -hmm. re, uh, and learn about what mary magdalene has to say um there's a number of books out there that i really like uh, one of them is um and then yeah. we actually went to a yeah. workshop on that yeah that book there i actually hey you got my book i was uh, there and i actually went before. to tom kenyon when we got married we went to his workshop in seattle mm -hmm. and uh yeah so to me that is really the key of what our true relationship is all about and that's a magdalene manuscript um the alchemies of horus and sex magic of isis by tom uh, Kenyon and Judy Sion. And I I was just reading this before um, Tyson and I got on the show this morning, and that's where the feminine and masculine 
energy. That's where my idea came from this morning. Well, thanks for reading my mind because that's exactly what I was talking about. Mm -hmm. And I, I love Tom Kenyon because Tom Kenyon says, look, he says, I'm just an ordinary dude. And he's, you know, he's a big, heavy, overweight guy. And and he says in here, and, and he says, I'm channeling Mary Magdalene. I mean, this is weird, this, you know, but that's the way it was, right? That's where Mary, Mary Magdalene chose to come through him. Mm -hmm. And he's very, very gifted as a sound healer. If you ever get the chance to listen to, to his him chanting is absolutely, like he calls in the angelic kingdom with his chanting. I think he has a five octave range. And when wow. he chants, they actually show up. You can feel them in the room. Right. When he calls in the angels by name, like Ezekiel, Ezekiel will be there. It's the most incredible experience to be around Tom Kenyon. And if I was going to be learning to be, I'm, I mean, a licensed sound coach, but if I was going to do it with my voice, I would take training from him. All right. So Debbie says here, just to shift topics here, yesterday I posted the Dell Big Tree interview with Dr. Zach Bush, he is a researcher in linked air pollution, population, microbial disorders to COVID. He also stated <laughs> that COVID is different because it is similar to cyanide poisoning and is why putting a respirator on is deadly to the patient. Super interesting and worth watching. Yeah, what we're finding out is COVID-19 is not a virus. It's, um, God, I can't remember the name, but it's actually a pulmon pulmonary problem, which uh, affects actually needs to be dealt with by, you know, uh, with penicillin and, and, and in other words, it's a, a, it's not what they think they are and actually putting people on respirators is making it worse. So they, the diagnosis is completely wrong. I know, I think I had COVID-19 when I was in Taiwan, which the time that it was released, uh, 5G was released in, um, in uh, China. And Wuhan, like which is 500 miles away, and uh, you're absolutely right. The the factors there was one: we were in close proximity, sleeping in very close to each other, males separated from females. I had a different diet, so I was under stress. We were up and traveling all day long. We were in and the clouds were, you know, it was very cloudy, and the air pollution factor was absolutely over the top, which was the same which was in Wuhan. So I think there's a, a suppression of your ability to debrief that activates or gets fired up by. Um, mm, wow, that's interesting take on yeah, it. Yeah, they say mm -hmm. that some of the research says that uh, 5G is like the, the spark that creates the this whole <laughs> thing to, to activate, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, or may not be right or wrong about that, but yeah, so it is a microbial disorder that that needs to be dealt with it's not a virus so you're absolutely right and air pollution is going to aggravate it if you look where the major um right. covid19 uh, cases are it's always in the polluted areas right. around the planet and also if you take a map of 5g and superimpose it or 5g has been implemented you'll see that there's a correlation between the map of covid19 and 5g so do your research i'm not saying i'm right you can come to your own conclusions and we want you to do that. Anything mm -hmm. we say on this show is for you to do your own research and come to your own conclusions. But we do want you to, you know, shake your head a bit and think, ah, oh, you know, what is going on here anyway? I think for yourself. Yeah. So uh, oh, it says, how do you reconcile the effects of miscarriages in a family? How does it affect the kids that come after miscarriage or abortion? Well, yeah, I think we talked about this on another show. Uh, there's a book here. I don't know if I can grab it off here. Yeah, it's called A Cry from the Womb. Yeah. I was going to say that would be a good one for her right now anyway. Yeah. So this is A Cry from the Womb where, uh, and Laura and I are both, uh, can have the training to be able to do this to help bring the soul that's from the abortion or from the miscarriage through the other side and some are still entangled uh, with their twin or with the child that was born after them and can literally be an inhabiting the body of the person who's still alive right so lots and so the uh, emotionally psychologically spiritually the mother can still be affected because that little one is still crying right still before the opportunity 
Oh, we have healing a the womb. So yeah, so this is very important. It's called <laughs> A Cry from the Womb, Healing the Heart of the World by Gwendolyn Ewan Jones, a guide to healing and helping souls return to the light after sudden death, miscarriages, stillbirth, or abortion. Okay, very important. We're no, no, don't take any of these hand raises. Hmm? Don't take any of these hand raises. Just go on. Keep going on our well, you can read them out. I don't have to be reading them out. What's well, the next you can one? read them out. What I'm saying is that there's some people on the sh on here on Zoom that want that have raised their hand that want to talk. Yeah. Don't let them because see they're no. right. they're just being silly. <laughs> right. So let's let's keep talking about what was the next one? Uh, oh, you're a funny guy. That was from Debbie. <laughs> he is funny, isn't he? I I agree. And so, then Oz says, my mom was like that too, very strong woman, but not happy. I'm, she's doing the deep cleaning protocol call for two days or three days now and feel that it would clear all things. I forget to work on, the, on all these years. And it screws up your relationship too when you want to do what you want to do is to be strong. Oh, be the strong one. You mean, yes, you're talking about the... the being a female and trying to have more masculine energy and it's not in balance. Yes. And then they attract weak men. That's true. That's true because if you're too strong of a woman, um, a very strong man will be felt like he's in competition with you and nobody wants to be in competition in a relationship. It's supposed to be, or not supposed to be, but it works best when you have balance. And so if you're too strong and the man is, is too weak, then there's there's balance there, but then one is again vamping on the other one, kind of is how I put it. I love what Oz goes to say. I, I am like this, and I do it all. I work uh, part time doing energy work to support my 19 quitters, all paperwork and bills, maintain and work my ranch, everything. I look at it as it is awesome. This is Debbie. Mm -hmm. I, I look at it as if it's awesome. I also am able to have the knowledge to do it all. Sometimes I need to ask for help so to do it my relationship i'm seen as very independent but i am too may hide behind a brave face until i pick myself up again bottom line it's okay to wear the pants in a relationship yeah and it's all right to find somebody that you love that can wear the pants too right that can help you be careful with this one this caller you know who it is lewis oh good <laughs> hello welcome to the wellness show Hey, Tyson. Hello, how are you? How's everyone? We're doing great. I didn't make no sense about the 5G experience that you had. This is all this is all related to 5G. There's no question about it because the 5G deployment is what creates the, the flu-like symptoms. And therefore, people with... Uh, pre-existing positions end up in the hospital and that's where things go haywire. Right. That's exactly what happened with my father. Um, I mean, it's, it's no question about it. So I totally agree with your experience. Um, well, thank you for that. Much appreciated. Yeah, 5G is a little bit uh, over the top. So yeah, so thanks for phoning in. Well, uh, I wanted also to mention, you know, the spray uh, boost uh, box that they sent me. This thing uh, is all 5G related, and my body went in so much pain that I had to remove it. And I I totally disregard anything 5G. We just got a new TV. Uh, uh, and when they give me the option to connect with 5G, I decline and I stay within the 2G. So every electronic now is, is loaded with the 5G capabilities and we need to say no whenever we do doing the setup. Yeah, there's a number of different you know. things you can do. I mean, there's no doubt that it is toxic and it is affecting your energy field. Uh, one of the things is to raise your energy field sufficient mm -hmm. that it can counteract that. Uh, I mean, go. 5G is in everything. I mean, uh, your smart meter is 5G, your new fridge is 5G, all your electrical switches yeah, I, are 5G. I my, my smart meter, um, so I'd rather stay away from that because I 
now, and so I'm able to get myself involved in doing my own readings. Yeah. But they came many, many times, and I gave lectures to the guys telling them, do you realize what 5G uh, what this smart meters are doing? You know, because I learned so much from this lady in California, Deborah Tavares. Yeah. And she's a dynamo when it comes to the 5G and everything that's going on. So I also have my BioShield 5G protection that protects yeah. my house for the meters around. And whenever I go out on the street and I take it, I have a shield of eight meters of protection around me. So any antenna would not affect my body. And, yeah. you know, that's, and I've been exposed to people with 5G. My, my father yeah. law, I just wanted to risk my, but he passed and I was doing a, a break healing on him personally. And then, uh, my mother in law, 92 years old, she was released from the hospital because she refused treatment of any kind. And she's, she's going strong, 92. She's back That's to great. her old self watching, you know, so, and she coughed directly in front of me. Like, I had a mask on, but I'm saying, if anything, you know, if I get it, look, I, I just go with the flow and I'm taking my, all my, um, my supplements and do all my energy work and everything. Yeah, it's really important to keep your immune system up. Yeah, and, and when it comes to when it comes to 5G, it also affects your immune system too. So building up your immune system is the most important thing you can do for 5G as well. Yeah. I mean, you can do organite, you can do all sorts of different things to build your system up. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just gonna tell us. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna let you go here. So uh, sorry, Lewis. I'm just gonna let you go. Uh, I just want to tell a story that I think is symbolic of what, how our energy field can develop, uh, how we can upgrade ourselves, or how some people are already upgraded, however you want to describe it. But I have a friend, she's Japanese, and her father was in the epicenter of the Hiroshima bomb when it was dropped. Everybody died of cancer, but he didn't. So why is, what's the genetics in his system? that therefore radiation did not adversely affect him. Now, I don't know the answer to that. Was he a Buddhist monk or was he this or was he that or was it genetically something or did his genetics mutate because of the bomb or whatever. But the point I'm trying to make is our human body has the capacity to uh, adapt to many, many, many things. Would I like to live on a planet where I don't have to keep adapting to craziness that the stupidity of humans who think that they're smarter than nature. Well, I'd love to live on a planet like that. But in the meantime, I think I want to upgrade my energy system so that I can handle these things. And I know that, well, on one level, I guess the positive thing is the more that I upgrade my energy system, the more closer I am to being able to become enlightened, to understand the joy. And then if I wasn't under duress, maybe I would be more lazy about it, right? It wouldn't be as much of a necessity to do this. So, uh, you know, there's always going to be light and there's always going to be dark. There's always going to be the push. And that's what accelerates us on this planet. This is a planet of duality. And uh, I've said it many, many times, we can get into the judgment about what's good and what's bad. Mm -hmm. But in actual fact, there is no good and there is no bad. There's just evolution, right? Right. So, if we can have that sort of attitude, oh, they're doing this to us. Oh, okay, what do we have to do to upgrade to handle that energy? I think we'll be better off if we have that. It, because we can't stop it. We can't convince the, like Lewis was saying, well, did I talks to the guy who's installing the 5G? Well, that guy is doing a job. He doesn't want to listen about something that would not give him a job, right? He's not going to listen to you. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, I saw a video. I don't know if it's true. Michael said, oh, this guy's got a brand new helmet on and he's got a brand new vehicle. I don't think it's true. But he was working during the shut, you know, the, the shutdown, installing uh, computer panels for 5G in the towers. And it says COVID-19 on the panel. Why is he being instructed to take a computer 
you know, like in, you have a plug in the computer, you know, you put it in the slot. Well, this is what he's doing is going to the 5G tower and putting in COVID-19 programming into it. To me, that's crazy. And it says COVID-19 on it. It's not, you know, like, it's not hand painted or something. It's not something he, he created. And it says, but he and he's being hired to install this. So, so if there's no connection between 5G and COVID-19, why do they have the upgrade called COVID-19 for 5G? Makes no sense to me. Did somebody just do that because it's a big joke? They need all these things and shipping it all over the country to install in 5, 5G towers? No, no. Was that the was that the guy that was talking about that he that he stopped being uh, a tower like a cell phone tower worker because of this? Say that again. Did he do a did he do like a YouTube? Yeah, he did a YouTube in which he's it's in England and he's talking about and he's showing you. Yes. Okay, I saw the thing. He's got a yellow mm -hmm. hard hat on, right? Right. No, whether it's true or not, you know, uh, it, it's highly suspicious. I don't know if it's true or not. Should so, we go for it to see if it is or not? What's that? Let's douse for it to see if it is or not. Okay, great observation. What does it say there? We're near at the top of the air hour here. I just want to finish off the comments here. Yeah, great observation. Conspiracy theories are there because they are true and have much mm -hmm. truth to them. And I think the most important thing is for us to wake up, right? Conspiracy theories help us wake up and not swallow what the, the regular press is trying to tell us, that there's two sides to every story. We're only hearing one side of the story. So to be balanced, we might want to figure out what the other side of the story is. Right. Yeah, that's good. All right, I have another uh, this person I just happened to look at that we're all past our time. I'm working with another client who says, uh, I'm saying, look, you want to work with me, you need to book a free time and I can help you get started. Mm -hmm. and, uh, her comment is, I can't commit right now. I'm under such duress, but request your support and send light. Look, look, come on, people. If you keep asking us to send you light and give you support, but you're not willing to commit to have a free session to get us to help you start it on your path to recovery, then you're going to always want you wanting us to send you this and send you that or do this. Look. We have to put bread and butter on our tables as well. We have to support our families. Yeah, we want to help you, but let us help you help yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Don't ask us to do I, all the work. I asked a woman this weekend who called and was um, talking to me in the same exact way. And I said, I'm I'm not I'm not that person. I said, I know that you that you have like five or six other people that are working on you right now and you want me there too and you want me to do it you want me to do it like pro bono and i'm not i'm not doing this i'm not no go go work with them or get serious and get clear with yourself and come work with me and or or just work with one of them or but like or just do the deep clearing and get on with it well you have to like you can't keep expecting to get stuff for free. And, and I'm, I will pray for people, no problem. But if you want me to continue to send you energy and, and light specifically to you, but you don't actually want to do the work. Mm -mm. No. Mm -mm. And I will, and I will say, yep, get, get clear with yourself and do the deep cleaning protocol. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah at least do the deep clearing yeah. protocol and then talk to us. And then if you've done the work, well, you know, you do the work, you get the results, then we can work with you because we know that you're committed to doing the work. If you're just phoning us and saying, I want you to clear this and I want to clear that, or Tyson, what about this? What about that? What about whatever? Or more, it's not fair to us. You're just like a, a sap sucker, right? You're like a yeah. leech. We want you to be able to take back your personal power and to do that, you need to be on a journey of self-discovery. We're here to support you on your journey of mm -hmm. self-discovery. We're not here to rescue you. We right. love you but we're going to kick your butt. Okay. It's true. All right. So this is the show for today. Deep clearing protocol. Join us. We can help you get you from where you are to where you want to be in the shortest amount of time. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we're back tomorrow morning, same time, same place, uh, which is eight o'clock 
Pacific or air with you for one hour. You can phone in, join us on Zoom, or you can ask your questions on the Facebook page wherever you're watching the show. If we didn't catch your questions, we will find them and answer them on the next show. So until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and wise. Bye for now. Bye. For quality online wellness products, courses, and services, visit our sponsors, thewellnessstore.ca and the Extraordinary Healing Arts Academy located at thewellnessacademy.ca. To stay in touch, visit us at thewellnessshow.ca. And until next time, be healthy, wealthy, and wise.